the good, you know, I will say that the only saving grace in trying something like totally new, like I'm trying today, is that I know that I have like the undying support of Randy McEntee. Like I know that he won't be like, you know, on the chat, you know, saying like Andy probably looks nervous or anything like that. I'm super. Oh, hey, Randy. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome uh, to episode 50 of Logic Live. I can't believe we're doing this. I can't believe we've done 50 episodes of this. Uh, it's just kind of, uh, it, it, it's just amazing. So I want to thank everybody for joining in. This is going to be a great show, uh, if for no other reason than that we're trying new things. Like, you know, uh, this is the first thing they taught us in film school was if you have a system that works, don't change it. And clearly, well, now you know why they've never asked me back. <laughs> All right. Yes, we are here. This is episode 50, 15 things about fleeing that Andy Brown can't figure out with our guest, Andy Brown. Um, you're going to be, Randy, you'll be thrilled to know that up until like 30 seconds before we started, we were having technical problems. <laughs> so, <laughs> but we got it working, which is all that matters, man. All right. Oh, I see so many people here. Yes, that's right, Randy. We got full HD going on. We might even be in 4K today. I'm so excited because I hate working in 4K. So therefore, it's only natural that I should be in 4K, right? Oh, all right. We're getting close here. The music is switched to like kind of more of a, um, you know, introspective. It's gotten quieter now, and I have to get ready to switch. This has been my first dissolve here with this new look. I'm so excited. Oh, and it didn't work. <laughs> there we go. Randy. I think I'm never going to hear the end of that. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 50 of Logic Live. Wait a minute. I have a title here. My name, my name is Andy, as you can see. Uh, you know, for 49 episodes of Logic Live, we had no ability to make a title, and I have over 20 of them now prepared. I've been I've spent more time in the last 24 hours making titles for this, and I know I couldn't be happier, uh, and I'm sure. Yes, that's right, Jeff. We definitely dissolved into something. In fact, here, watch this. As Jeff Kyle pointed out, um, Andy, you definitely dissolved into something. So yes, thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. Um, let's get underway. Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining. Here we go. Let's do this. Ho! Oh, this episode of Logic Live is brought to us all by our friends at Synesis.io. Solutions, development, integration, and support. Supporting flame artists since 1997. If you have uh, any need for their remote workflow solutions, you can reach out to them at Synesis.io. I want to thank Steve. I see him there in the chat for being just such a huge and loyal supporter to the Flame community. These guys have supported everything. They've supported the user groups. Uh, my One of my favorite stories of all time is when I, I uh, emailed you know, Steve Strong and said, hey, um, I'd like to get an ice sculpture that says one frame of white for the Logic Party in Vegas. Can you make that happen? And he just went, yeah. And and then there it was. So, you know, uh, he's one of my favorite people in the world. So thank you, Steve. And thank you, Synesis, for supporting Logic we also want to welcome back our friends at AJA. They make the best video hardware around. You know it if you need anything in the realm of uh, video hardware for live or streaming. Head on over to AJA.com. And we'd like to welcome all of our patrons from Patreon and thank everybody uh, on, for sponsoring us on, Pat on Patreon. Randy and I have set up three levels of sponsorship. Uh, we're actually looking at adding two more to kind of like fill in the gap, especially between the HD and the 4K range there. But it's a great way to support what we're doing here uh, at Logic. Uh, there's also access to great merch, exclusive content, like we always do a show after this show for the Logic patrons. Uh, and, uh, and, and you also get access to some great discounts. So if you'd like to support what we're doing, oh wait, let's just give a shout out to our, uh, our patrons. I think we picked up four or five more in the last week, so I just wanna thank everybody for, for uh, sponsoring us. And if you'd like to support what we're doing here at Logic TV, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Logic TV. Let's also give a shout out to our friends at Gunpowder. Uh, these guys, I actually worked with them a couple days last week setting up a remote machine, and it was absolutely awesome. Um, you know, As we were kind of like, uh, uh, just like they did on the show, um, we were kind of uh, playing around with the configuration and trying different things just to see what would work. 
Um, these guys, Tom and Tom, are fantastic. If you need anything in the realm of uh, engineering support or if you want to check out the uh, remote flame that they've set up, give these guys a shout at info at gunpowder.tech. And finally, the Boris FX Suite. These guys make the best plugins in the business. We know them. We love them. If you'd like uh, to check out any of their offerings, whether it's, and I'm going to get it right this time, Randy. I've been practicing. Uh, <laughs> it's Mocha, uh, Sapphire, Continuum, Silhouette, or Optics. Uh, head on over to borisfx.com and use Logic-15 at checkout to save 15% on everything they make, standalone or subscription. Thank you so much, Boris FX. And finally, I want to give a shout out to our man, Jeff, who's in the chat there. Uh, our first installment of Logic Academy, which is a, like a tutorials and training series based uh, uh, on like real world, uh, real world, yeah, real, Randy, we got to rewrite, re <laughs> we have to come up with a better description for this because I can't say any of these words, but uh, these are tutorials designed by flame artists for flame artists and uh, Jeff put together a three-part Logic Academy series on connecting conform. It's amazing. You can check it out at logicacademy.com. We added the archives up there too. Uh, so if you want to download it and check it out, it's ready for you. Okay. And, dun, dun, wait, let's get a drum roll going here. Even better. Coming up on the 28th of April is the Catch Up With Flame event. Uh, I'm sure you all saw that Flame 2022 came out last week, this past week. Congratulations to the dev team for making that happen. Uh, I know several of us here were on the beta, and it's just amazing to see what these guys produce uh, on April 28th, there's going to be a Catch Up With Flame event. They're going to show off uh, all the new stuff in Flame 2022, and that's going to be followed by the presentation of this year's Flame Award, hosted by yours truly. Uh, I, uh, good news, Randy, they approved my, uh, my wardrobe budget, so uh, the full tuxedo and top hat and tails that you requested are absolutely... I just The only thing I have, still have to get approved is the sequin bow tie and cummerbund. Um, believe it or not, those things are hard to come by even during these unprecedented times. But uh, autodesk.com slash campaign slash mandy dash events slash flame dash 428 uh, is the URL that just rolls right off the tongue there if you'd like to uh, register for the event. But you can find that event on the forum and uh, on Logic. And please join us. It's going to be a fantastic time. Okay, let's go back to here and introduce our guest for today. My guest today started out at MPC in London as a runner back in 1988. He worked his way up to online editor. Then after six years, he left to go to the mill. He spent a few years there, then worked at several other Soho facilities as a senior flame artist, head of VFX and company director until starting his own company, Four Walls, back in 2006. Four Walls became jogger in partnership with Cut and Run Editorial in London in 2010. And in 2017, he got the opportunity to head up Jogger Studios on the West Coast as creative director. Cut and Run and Jogger have U.S. offices in L.A., New York, San Francisco, and Austin. He has worked as a flame op since 2000, and there are still things, believe it or not, that annoy him nearly every day. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm Logic Live welcome to Andy Brown. Hello, sir. Hi, have you muted? Let me unmute you. I say, hello, sir. <laughs> Welcome to Logic Live. Oh, still? Damn it, Randy. Let's try it. Third time's a charm. There we go. There we go. We're in. Woo. Yeah. We're, in. We're, we're doing the, the, the Andy takeover again. Yes, you know, Randy uh, was thrilled. He couldn't believe that there's yet another Andy uh, that we can bring oh, in here. In oh, fact, I'm going to bring this to the broadcast. Here. Randy McEntee says, another Andy. Thank you very much, <laughs> Randy. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's plenty of us. There's plenty of us. That's right. We're taking over. Thanks so much for coming on, man. This is great. And thank you for suggesting this episode. It was, uh, we, we met during the, uh, you know, I'm going to do this too. Watch this. Whew. So we <laughs> met during, again. right? And I don't have the ability to repo myself in the window. I don't have like a front source. So I actually have to slide my chair. Yes. Yes. So, oh, no, it's doing well as well. <laughs> Wait. Hey, Randy, watch this. Um, Huh? Huh? I ignored my family for a whole day for this. So uh, we met during the Super Bowl episode uh, where you came right. on and showed off a spot. And I, I remember I was so nice. I was so considerate to put you on after Sean Cochran showed how he like, basically invented time travel. Um, I, I, 
But what was really, really wonderful, uh, and I just want to make sure everyone knows this, is that Andy reached out and said he wanted to come on the show and do an episode where he showed off all the things that just kind of annoy him or the little things about Flame that that uh, either you know can't figure out or do just pain in the ass every day. And yeah, let's I, figure I, them out I called it ten, I called it 10 Things I Hate About Flame. Uh, yeah. to start with. And, and it turns out there's, there's, there's loads. <laughs> there's more than 10. <laughs> no, yeah, the first list that you sent me uh, had more than 10. So yeah. I think this is great, man, that you're coming on, you're putting yourself out there, and that uh, you're willing to do this. So thank you very much. And uh, let's dive right in, shall we? We're going to begin here. Let me let's go back. It. Let me solo our friend Andy Brown here. And uh, I'm going to show off my first title. So the first thing that Andy has on his list is... F6 and F7 on the keyboard for editing one clip into another doesn't behave in a, in a consistent manner. He wants to see both timelines all the time. So I'm going to bring up Andy's flame. Yeah. And right, now why don't you show us what you're talking about? Okay. So say I've got a, um, I've got a 30 seconder here that, uh, is that the wrong way around? Maybe it's the other way around. Oh, I'll do it this way around. So I've got, I've made my 30 seconder. And I now, uh, I'm going to just maybe for whatever reason, I'm going to now um, make my 15 out of that out of that footage. Now, one of the things that I, I kind of like to do while I'm uh, while I'm working is I like to um, let me just do that and that is I like to put these little markers in that will say what I'm doing to a shot. So whether it will be okay, so there's a work on this sign needed to be done, and then work here needed to be done on this sign. And generally when I put the markers in, I'll put them in in whatever the default color of the day is, which will be blue. And then when I've done them and I can tick them off my list, I then make them green like that. So that's that's kind of how I, how I set those things up. Um, and then, so say I've done all those shots that they're all green now and I'm now gonna move on and do my 15. So uh, here's my 15 over here and I wanna be able to see between the two. So I've got my record side here and I've got my playback side with my source here. So I'm going F7, F6, F7, F6 to switch between the source and the record, which is great. But I want to see I want to see the timeline switch as well. So if you tab, if you hit this or hit down here, when you then do that, it then switches across between the two. So you're hitting F6, F7 and it and it jumps between them as you go. So that's great. But it's just not consistent. So if I go and do something else and then go back to it and then hit F6, F7, it doesn't do it anymore. So it's like, I just told you I wanted it to do that. So <laughs> could you keep doing it? And I think that's one of, that's a, definitely a theme within some of these little bugbears, that they're things that you go, okay, I want to do this. This is how I want it to be. You know that now. Now don't do anything else until I tell you to do something different. So that's... Uh, it, it, it's you know it's a slightly irritating thing, but it's just it's just one of those things that that makes you feel well. Just behave consistently. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> so, totally. so, so that's what I'm, I, I'm going to open up and see what your uh, see what what people's are. You know, yeah, people never used it before, which is good. But I, yeah, <laughs> that's the that's definitely the, the the one of the greatest things about Flame is that there are you know. 20 different ways to do everything. So, you know, yep. you could do it with your, um, you know, you could do it instead of being with the player, you could do it with your source sequence and you can do it this way. And that, again, the F6, F7 works that way as well. But again, it doesn't do the same thing. So, it's, so there are there are always lots of different ways to do things. And uh, But I just, I'd like it to be more consistent, consistent in the way that it Sure. Works. Yeah, I'm a hotkey junkie and... Uh... And that's great. I like. I'm, I agree with what I've been seeing in the chat here. That there are a bunch of people who who have never. I didn't know that F six F seven did that. Um, I did run your list by a couple of people on the dev team. Uh, oh, and, trust. <laughs> and well, and uh, you, you'll be happy to know that this is something uh, that that needs to be submitted. So uh, it's either a feature nice. request or it's possibly a bug. And so. Uh, what I'm going to do at the end of the show here today is submit all of these things that come up to Flame Feedback if they're not there. And oh, post oh, that's amazing. The list for everybody also, because we have like we have video of it, you know, so I can submit a video clip to show the behavior. So hopefully that'll right. get some uh, 
that'll get some stuff uh, resolved there. Um, I would like to just, before we move on to the second tip, I just want to thank, you know, Randy has been working very hard on the uh, chatbot uh, plugin for our YouTube feed, and this one uh, just came out from our chatbot. I'm just, I just want to say that this is, I'm extremely proud uh, to see that, you know, we're using uh, 50 years of technology uh, to, you know, trash Canadian bagels. So I just want to, I'll be periodically calling those out. So thank you very much. Um, well then that's, that was number one. Let's move on number to number one. two. Number Were two we on time? Was that, about, was that about the right amount of time? Oh, yeah, thing? you know, that reminded me, I have a timer that we're going to use also. We're going to do three minutes per. Okay. Right. That's what I need is more pressure. So, <laughs> right. Well, you're flame artist. We're used to this. So, um, the, uh, number two, edit from source to record side and all the markers that you set come across, but you just spent 20 minutes like you showed in the green and the blue marking everything up. And then those are all scattered in different places when you like take them from your 50, your yeah. 30 and, and yeah. try yeah, to so let me show 15. you that. Okay. Uh, okay. Bring up your flame. I'm not sure I can drag this out to three minutes, but so say oh, again, same, we'll add it to the rest at the end rather. It's, it's the same, uh, same, same setup. So this is our, uh, this is our record side and this is our, Playback side, so again, that doesn't do what I want it to do, but say I'm going to be putting this clip in here onto in here. And let me just put that up to the right spot so it does it in the right place. Okay, so you can see I've got a load of blue markers in here, and I've also got a load of green markers in here. And they are kind of, you know, they're working around specific clips in specific places. So if I overwrite this and add this bit in here, I've now got this marker has come across from the other one. Now, the, there would be maybe some logic in saying, well, okay, that marker now refers to this clip. So that clip is done now. So that kind of makes sense. So maybe you should just, you know, throw this guy away and that's sensible. But I've also got this marker here, which is now completely out of sync with everything because it came from this clip over here, and now I don't have that clip in there. And then I got this one, which doesn't even, it's like off the end of the spot completely. So it's like, well, sh sh should it just take the markers that refer to the, the areas that you're taking across? Why is it just doing everything after it? Uh, that, do that doesn't make any sense to me. And I find it confusing, and I'd like to have the option to not take the markers. Like the BA, you know, again, like a default setting where you went, uh, where you said, I would, when I edit from one to the other, I do not want the markers. Now, I know there's ways around this. I can quite happily, you know, I could quite happily copy this clip here and paste it into paste it into here or, you know, do something different, whatever I, whatever I wanted to do. There are different ways to do it that wouldn't do that. But it just seems that it's a, a, an extra bit of unwelcome functionality. The, uh, I can tell you the answer I got back and Michael, uh, Michael Landon in the comments or in the chat here nailed it. It's, uh, the answer to this is to use segment markers instead of timeline markers. Uh, the timeline markers are kind of fixed in time on that current timeline. The segment ones will, uh, travel with the segments as you go, uh, from shot to shot or as you, yeah. as you copy and paste them or, or. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I get that. And I think that that's, and but I would also say that, you know, that, I would use those for different things. You know, I would, my logic, my way of working is like, yeah, I'll do that if there's something that I know that needs to stick to it. But actually mm -hmm. this is a bit that I want to go. I just want to clear, like this, this gives you, I think a much clearer visual look when you look at your, uh, when you look at your master and you go like, I can instantly see I've got four more shots to do and I've done two in this one. You know, I've still got that to go. If I was looking at my little, um, you know, if I was looking at my little segment markers, ah, that's the wrong button. Control, is it? Oh, I can't remember all the buttons. But, um, it, you know, if I was using that, then, you know, you just have the little marker in here. It wouldn't be sat down um, all the way uh, in the... Um, so there we go. I did remember the camera key. So that that's there. It's just not as clear, particularly if you've got a BFX, which I generally do have. Uh, so, you know, that one's not going to be as clear as these ones down in the bottom. So I get there's a different way to do it, but I still think it's annoying. <laughs> I wonder if maybe there's a, if there's a way or maybe there could be a way to um, take your timeline. Hold on, let me do this. 
to take your uh, timeline markers and um, almost like bake them like into segment markers or something, you know, so that way uh, when you do copy the timeline from, you know, copy the stuff from one timeline into another timeline, uh, yeah. there's some way for those things to be frozen like where they are. Um, yeah, 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 maybe. And just just as a just as an answer to the segment marker thing, the reason why I, I was just thinking, well, why don't I normally do that? And the reason is because I do this, I'll put these markers in right at the start of the job. So like mm-hmm. then stuff gets changed. You know, this one will be pulled out and something else will go in the place. So then your marker's gone. So that's the that's the logic for doing it that way, is that it's I like it to be attached to the spot uh, rather mm-hmm. than to the clip. So that's the logic behind that. Right. What's on our. Makes sense. All right. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's some people like John is saying there needs to be like a ripple sync mode there. You're, you're getting some, some, uh, some agreement in the, in the, uh, in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. On that one there. All right. Let's okay. check out number three. Number three is media panel jumps around all the time. Stay at one size, please. Okay. So, so this is a, this is a two part, uh, two part hassle. So f- lately when I've been firing up flame, I think just, I think this is just a 2021 thing, but it always comes in with my full, with my full uh, media, whatever you call it, library panel at full height, which a doesn't have a hotkey to get rid of it, which I could write one, but I don't, didn't. And B, so I never, I never ever have this. I never use, never use this. I don't know why, but I just never do. And I can't get my hand to go into the right place to hit render at all with it, with it there. So that's that's number one irritating. Number two irritating is so like I've got my name of my clip up here, and I generally will have whip numbers on the end of them, and I can't see that whip number now. So I go, okay, great. Well, I'll just pull this out here. I'll have my whip number so I can see how far I am through and which is the version I've got on the desktop and which is the version I've got saved in my library. And now I'm going to look at this clip here. Okay, great. And now I'm going back and now it's gone again. So it's like, okay, just be there. Stay there when you're in the reels. Make this my default position for this job at the moment until I change it rather than defaulting back to that every single time. <laughs> So it's a, it, and I think that's all it is. I think it's just looking at something in full screen and then going back again is when it when it causes the problem. Um, yeah. But uh, but it, I don't think it does it in other bits. If you work in effects or you work in tools or anything, I think it's fine. If you go to the media hub, it broadly speaking stays the same. So everything's okay, apart from if you do that and blow it out the way. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that is annoying. I, I completely agree with you. That that one is annoying. Um, I, I guess I could put, start putting my whip numbers on the front, but that doesn't seem very sensible. <laughs> eh, I, no, I, I wouldn't. I, I, I wouldn't. You shouldn't have to change your workflow that much, you know, to accommodate that. I think uh, it's definitely annoying that it bounces back to its position on the left. Like I, I totally get how, like, uh, you know, the the height is only available for certain, you know, modules. Yeah. Like, you know, I totally understand that. But I think the the left and right thing is annoying. I also wish that there was an option um, to kind of automatically, uh, you know, maybe wi- go as wide as like the the, the name column that you have there. In the yeah, you do a kind of an Excel spreadsheet, to, you know, double click on the top kind of thing. So it's you know yeah. just it automatically. And again, that I guess that wouldn't be hard to do that. Mm-hmm. I would have thought. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just a thing that you and all of these things. I think the the theme when I was talking through these. Uh, with you on our little run through, I said this, that the, the theme of all of these things is they're really not like you can see someone goes, yeah, that doesn't really matter. Just, you know, just pull the thing out. That's fine. You go, but yeah, but if I have to do that every time I go from full screen back to the reels, I do that, you know, I don't know, a thousand times a day. A thousand so times a day, yeah, right. <laughs> I do that, and it, but that saved me two seconds. That's two thousand seconds. That's however many minutes that is. It all adds up, you know. And it's just it, the 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 best part about Flame for me is its is its speed and how fast you can move around things and how fast you can make it happen. And just anything that stands in the way of that just feels like a a is a burden to yeah. That's too big a word. It just feels it just is a little annoyance that you just go if it didn't if it didn't do that. I could maybe, you know, I could maybe stop at 
six instead of seven once a week or something. You know, <laughs> it, would, it would just make that difference. I like what Richard said in the chat. It's death by a thousand cuts. He's absolutely right. Yeah, it's little, exactly. little, little quality of life things. All right, yeah. cool. Well, you know what? That right there is a feature request. So I'm going to throw right. that up there and we will definitely add that. Fantastic. This is going much better than I thought. See? I thought, so far. Well, I thought, I thought yeah, so far. Yeah, wait for, <laughs> wait for the next one. Just, okay. Th thanks for jinxing it uh, 25 minutes in. I really appreciate that. Uh, okay, so we're going moving on to number four. In the item, um, and hold on. Oh my, yeah, number four. Number my four. Tablet has died. My pointing right. device. There we go. Da da da. Yeah. When you, you don't have to get a mouse. That's the you know. Yeah, right. When you connect a PSD to the mat input of an action node, it doesn't update. And then Andy said, and I imagine you've you've said this uh, on many occasions in your illustrious careers. I have. I genuinely thought I was going mad. <laughs> okay, so I got a little demo. So, uh, so here, so this here is a, a, a little BFX and it's got a, got a thingy in it. So let's have a look at what that is. So I got a graphic that was supplied. It wasn't supplied, I made it. Okay, and that just goes in. It's just a PNG with an alpha channel. So you've got that and you've got that. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. That's going into action so I can shift it around. Anyway, we can definitely see that that doesn't read because the green over the green is no good. So we decided, well, you know what, let's just make it, let's just make it white. Okay. So there's a couple of different ways you can do that. You can go front, you can choose the right layer, then you can go front off, which does that. Okay. Or you could just do that. And I've done that in the past and gone, okay, great. That's fine. I now know where I am and everything looks normal. It's just saying there's an internally generated there, which means there's nothing connected. And then my map is there. Okay. Seems absolutely fine. But say, and if I wanted to update that with the new, so, so another PNG comes in and it's graphic two, I can just go in and drop that over there and it updates and it does the same thing and it's still there and it's all fine. So, say a new piece of artwork comes in and it's a PSD and I drop that in, but it doesn't work. It doesn't auto connect because it's got a different formatting because this has got a layer and a background and a flat output. So then you go, okay, well, let's have a look at this PSD. So I've got that, which is my main flat. And then I've got version, that's my fill and that's my alpha. Okay. So I can just take that and put that in there. So logically speaking, this, when we hit F4, should have that title over the top of that, right? That's the logic. It's not there. So it's it's like, it's invisible. I, you know, you think, well, did I, okay, maybe I put it in and I didn't hit lock frame. No, I did. It is there. It's definitely there. It's there for the whole time. I got, it's, did I change? It must be Z buffer. It's always Z buffer. No, Z buffer off. It's not that. Okay, so what what's going on in the timeline? There's nothing there. It's invisible. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't know it's there. And I go, well, it is, because look, there it is. So now you can fix it. You can put you can put that in, and then you can cut that cut that sorry. You can put that one in. I was glad to get a round of applause for actually making it break. And then it does work. So there are ways around it, you know, and it's not the end of the world. But I had a uh, I had a piece of artwork come in a new piece of artwork come in from a client and they sent it over and i put it on and i just i think i was probably rushing and i put it over and i exported a quick time and then i look it's the same it's what well, i put that on there i definitely put that on there and it had just it had just gone so there we go that is um, that's that's a bug right <laughs> that's got to be a bug yep i'm we're definitely going to submit that as a bug it's reproducible hey. And we have video yes. evidence. We have vi Thank video you, evidence, gentlemen. And that oh, did take right. me half an hour to actually get it to do it repeatedly. But there we go. Well, we at the community thanks you for your persistence. All right, let's move on to uh, number five. There's no M number to five. mask in the G mask tracer, like in the old G mask. Uh, I'm always hunting for the first little blob to close it. I know there's a button, but that's not what I use. So this is, uh, and, I, and I know she's listening, this is for Anne Trotman because on my first day working with Anne at, uh, at Blue, uh, so she was working as like flame assist 
and uh, I came in as a new flame artist. And uh, she, we were, I think it was literally the first <laughs> first morning, first day, let me put my screen up. First morning, first day, and we were doing something and uh, GMAS Tracer related, uh, sorry, GMAS related. And so I was went in and went, okay, I'm gonna add some geometry and went blah, 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 and then did that to connect it, right? That's fine. And so she said to me, why, why didn't you just hit M? I'm like, well, that's because I didn't know you could just hit M. So now I know you can just hit M, great, that gives me on my mat, and then you go, lovely, so now I've got my, and also, I also wanted to give a another little shout out to, um, to Skippy, to Dave Clifton, because when you hide something, but you meant to hide it, stick it up there. Because otherwise you don't know whether you meant to hide it or you just hid something and it you did a hide all and it unhid something or hid something. So that is Dave Clifton's, Skippy's tip. If you meant to hide something, stick it above the axis because that never happens and you'll visually know that you meant to do that. That's a good so one. That's that's a, it is a good one. I use that one a lot. So that that looks great. Uh, GMAS Tracer. So which, I, honestly, I never use the GMAS anymore at all for anything. So I only use the GMAS Tracer. So we're going to do that, and we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to go one, two, three. Just, hopefully, you can hear my M not doing anything. <laughs> and, now, and now, and now I can't even tap to the end because it's gone. Oh, well, you clearly meant to do something. So now I have to hit closed. Or the other methodology is you go in and you do one, two, three, and then you're going like that. Okay, and that's fine. That's fine if you've done that. But if what you've actually done is draw around a little tiny thing that's got a lot of different little bits to it and you've kind of got in like, then you're going, oh, Christ, I've got to get into the thingy and see where that thing is. So I'd just, I'd like a button for that, please. It's a small thing, but I'd like a button for that, please. Is there a button for that? There, there is a hotkey for it I, that I found. Oh, that's all. Um, wait, hold on. Where I wrote it down. It's Alt C. Alt C. Okay, should we try? Alt C. Let's see if it works. It, actually, to be truthful, I don't think it will work because I'm working on any desk on my machine at the moment, and the Alt buttons are a bit flaky. So no, it didn't. So that okay. probably works. That probably works on an actual like when you're on the machine. Um, so someone can try that at home and let us know in the chat if it works. I did. So, again, so I, I, I sent, like I said, I sent some of these over to the, the dev team up at uh, Montreal. And one thing they did write back about why that functionality, why the M and everything was removed from GMAS Tracer or is not there in GMAS Tracer is because yeah. with GMAS Tracer, you do have the option to create an open shape. Like if you just wanted to create a line with a soft edge, which you don't have in a regular GMAS. So that, that is just a, that, is, that, was that a, is true, but also bullshit because that doesn't really. I can still do an open line. That's fine. I just want to say I want a button to close it. Was there? Yeah, yeah. I think that I get the I get the idea behind it, but I don't think that's thought through. I think a nice simple M button would be great, and I will now be writing a hotkey to do that and pretend it's old. <laughs> I would suggest M. Okay, <laughs> moving yeah. on then to number six. Oh yeah, number six. No set slash keep keyframe in the timeline without going into an animation menu. Such a useful functionality, but buried. Okay. So say we have, so I've got two things here. And so say for example, I wanted to set this up in my in my timeline because you know maybe I'm referring to my offline picture or something like that. Although to be fair, that's got better in the last version. So Say I wanted to do this, that's what I wanted, okay? And then I go somewhere else in the clip and I go, actually, it's going to be better over here. So now I've got, um, oh, now it's not doing it. Why is that not even moving? Hang on, because I didn't do a position move. I only did a size move, that's why. So now I've got an animation between those two positions and I can jump between those two keyframes and I know that I only want that one and I don't want that one. But within action here, although you get access to you know, a lot of the kind of functionality. So I can see, for example, what the values are changing to. I, and I can I can clear values and make them zeros, but I can't with a control 
click, but I can't like to actually go in and go, I want to delete that keyframe. I need to go into here and go to there and then delete that keyframe and then come out to do it. So we then get that. Randy, but that's just uh, has Randy in the in the chat has suggested uh shift delete. Oh, this is so good. So let's try that. As in that delete. Yep, yeah, shift and then delete that. on the keyboard. Yeah, that's not working for me, but that again maybe that may just be an any any desk. If I did backspace, that'll delete the whole clip. If I did shift delete. That doesn't work for me. Again, that may that may just be a uh, an AnyDesk failing functionality. Um, but see. I set up a button here. There we go. Yeah, I did. Um, hold on for one sec. I need a little. Let's see. If I go ahead and uh, let's see. I'm working local, um, so I don't have the uh, the any desk or the yeah. remote thing going on. So let's see. So if I just wanted to keep that one, uh, shift, delete, or no? Hmm. We got more suggestions. Oh yeah, right click the value you want to delete. Let's see that. Let's see if that works for me. Oh yeah, there you go. So what did you, oh, sorry, I was looking at mine, not yours then, what happened? There is a, there is a right click option uh, that will do um, keep. And where are you, so where, did, where did you select that? So you just go up to right, right from the, from the top menu? Yeah, the little there. value, like the value box for action here, the slider that you want to, uh, wherever you have the value. But I, I'm telling Yeah, you, that's I, fair enough. That's I tried fair. Again, this last, I tried I this last night and it, and uh, it, the, the keyboard shortcut did work. Let me see. Yeah. Oh, you know what it was? Yeah. Is I tried it on my Linux machine and not on not on Mac. Um, it's Shift Delete. This is. <laughs> this is great watching live. watching two people fail at doing something. <laughs> well, we were failing more. together, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, I didn't even have auto key turned on. I'm really batting a thousand. <laughs> okay, so I could do shift. I'm doing shift, delete, and then I click in here. Oh, that did it. Okay. I held down shift, delete, and then I had to click here. Shift, delete, and click the actual, the bit you wanted to do. Yeah. Oh, that didn't work for me. Oh, shift, delete. Oh, I haven't got enough hands. <laughs> yeah, I had to move my hand. I definitely had to reconfigure the hands. I don't think okay. it's okay. Well, that maybe needs more. That needs more confirmation and research, perhaps. I think maybe what we're missing here. This is an excellent opportunity for foot pedals uh, to operate flame. That'd be great. That'd be really good. I'd like that. Thank you. I'm going to give bring myself back, a round of applause. Bring back the, the, the Quantel, the Quantel Henry rat. <laughs> <laughs> now we're dating ourselves. Yeah, we are definitely. Oh, well, that's okay. that. I did it in my intro. All right. Uh, Let's do, uh, we're going to move on to number seven, which is yeah, the whole point I, I, of BFX is that you don't need them sitting in the media panel taking up space. Yeah, and there, is, there, there isn't really a demo that I can do for this, but and, and I haven't been able to establish why it does it or when it does it. But just, and, the, and again, this is just a reflection perhaps on the way that I that I tend to work is that I tend to have, most of the stuff done as BFX is rather than rather than batch. So you so the information that you need for this shot is in here. Now I know that I can iterate it and save it and it'll put it in here and you know we can have these different versions of it and that all makes perfect sense. But I kind of don't I don't need that really. I don't I'm never going to be pulling this out of here really. I would imagine not. I, I haven't done. Uh, because all the information that I need is there. And what happens quite often is you come back to the desktop and you find that your BFX iterations menu, which can be many hundreds long if you're doing it for every shot, just has opened itself up. And then you're going, I don't, why do I need you? I don't need you. Go away. But I can't, again, I'm not 100% sure why it opens up, when it opens up, 
or whiff as a way of going, I just don't need to see these. Yeah, I've definitely seen that open up on me and I don't know why. Um, yeah, yeah. Sometimes like I don't use BFX as often, uh, but, and so there are times where I'll get into these habits of like closing the closing libraries that I don't need because it's taking too long to save a desktop. Yeah. And, uh, you know, oh. that makes me mental. So, uh, sometimes then when I do anything in BFX that just opens up and then it like, you know, opens up, takes up the whole media library. So I like having them there for, for the times where I have had a BFX uh, like get corrupted or you, you bring back the, the, bring it back from an archive or something and there's no setup there. But I would definitely love to have a feature or a preference where that thing just is either hidden or stays closed. Just no matter what, unless I yeah. intentionally go open it, just stay closed. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. Out. I think there's, uh, yeah, I, I will say the same thing. It's like, I'm yeah, you don't the feature really, request everywhere. Yeah, yeah, you don't really need those BFX iterations because if you're going to access them, you'll probably access them from the, you know, from within the BFX menu. So yeah. when you're actually in there and you want to load up another one, you'll probably load it from here within yep. the iteration. You know, there's a, there's a value to it being there, but um, it, it, I'm not just not sure. I don't think I've ever gone, oh, what I need to do is drag this in here. You know, mm -hmm. I just don't think that's, that's ever happened. I, yeah, I imagine it was like they had to go somewhere and so they picked there for them to go. But I, 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 think, yeah. you're, I think a preference to, to hide it would probably be. Uh, yeah. So, and so that, since that real estate is always at a premium, you know, on that side of the exactly, screen. exactly. All right. Although I said it was, a, we're saying it was a premium, and then I also said I don't want to have it at full height because I don't like it. So I could give myself <laughs> some more space. <laughs> All right. We are moving on to number eight: syncing slash locking reels with clips that are in different aspect ratios. The gaps between the frames make it hard to compare the clips. And I am going to, honest to God, actually try to turn the three minute timer on this time. Let's do it. There we go. Okay. okay. So say I've got, this is my, this is my conform that I've got built out. And for whatever reason, I want to check that back against the nine by 16 version, which, you know, we're all sucks. Experienced <laughs> in the pain of these things. So, so I, you know, I'm going to put you in nine by 16 here. Thank you very much. I in appreciate that. In honor that. of the nine by 16. <laughs> so, you know, if you were just using the normal, which edit my day 604. So if we were doing the normal one, I'd just hit Y and then I, you know, I could either scroll through here or I could jump through the edits and I could just see the two and go, yeah, okay, that's great. And this is not just for offline comparison because, you know, I've got my offline sitting up here in my secondary track anyway, but, but for, for anything that you want to be, comparing two things. So this is an example of it. So now, like if I, if I hit Y over this, that looks perfectly sensible. It's gone into this kind of the same mode as you would expect if you hit Y in this one, they're all side by side. But if you try and do them together, so we'll hit, and it doesn't make any difference, what order you do it, and we'll do Y to this one, and then Y again, it's like, what the, well, that's not, I mean, I know it's kind of in the right place and it's in the middle, but it just looks so stupid. And it's, I, I just find my brain getting confused by the gaps. And I would like, I'd like to have it like, put black around it to make it the same width as this one. It just, I don't know what it is, but it's just like, no, that's stupid. That doesn't look right. <laughs> so. Yeah. Like I, I remember, I think it was before in, in, in previous versions of, of, uh, of flame, uh, or earlier versions of Flame, whatever you'd get uh, if you tried to, to sync up two things with different aspect ratios. I guess the one that wasn't your project res would it would stretch out, yeah. you know. So yeah, yeah. I think so maybe that's what. So this is better, but but it, it's just still like I, I feel like there's a better solution in there. You know, I'd like to have just the it, the file looking the same size as the one yeah. underneath it, but fill black for the rest of it. Um, maybe it's but, uh, maybe a preference for. Um, for it, you know, to have black, like to put pillar box bars around it or something so that it matches up. So like the second one matches with the first one or whatever, but I don't know if you can see it's the chat is going wild here. Uh, Renee was wondering what is the difference between Y and L? Does L work as well? I think Y is sometimes a vowel. No. If I remember correctly. L is, L, L is play it's definitely as a in... consonant. Yeah. I don't know what that does. I don't know. I, I mean, no, I don't Maybe that's a, Different preference thing. I don't know, but no, I've always wow, just look at 
look at this. This just shows you what a vital community we have here. Jeff says, I think it makes sense working the way it does. And uh, Sean Cochran says, uh, oh, hold on. I'm with you, Andy. That sucks for me too. I hate it so much. I don't use sync anymore. Yeah, good. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> Anything that I can do to be more like Sean Cochran will be excellent. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and add that as a feature request to flame feedback for you. All right, and moving on to number eight. Number nine. just did. Moving on to number nine. <laughs> Explode okay. effects results look stupid. I can make them look sensible. Flame should be able to as well. All right. Okay. So I'm gonna use the same, that same clip. So uh, just as a, as a little demo. So top layer there is the graphic and then the, the layer below that is just all the little slices coming out of the pizza. So there's just lots of little edits. So say, for example, you wanted to take this in and work on it in a BFX to make them, that title's actually supposed to go under the, underneath the um, underneath the pizza as it gets cut. So I'm gonna go in there and make a mat and do all the rest of it. So I think, well, I may as well just take the whole thing into BFX and work from there, okay? So if I say, well, this is a two part complaint. Part one, I want all of that stuff to now go into BFX, okay? Seems like a reasonable request. So we'll select it all, add effect. Oh, selection of flow graph doesn't even exist now. It's like, no, you can't do that. It just it doesn't, doesn't allow you to do it. I don't want an adjustment segment. I want all areas available. So it's like, okay, well, that's, why, why not? It should be able to do that. Okay, well, let's do this. Let's put a color source in there and let's put a, random color source in there. Now let's do the same thing. So that was part one. Add effect. Oh, now selection as flow graph is available again. Marvelous. Well, I don't know why you couldn't do that five seconds ago when there was nothing in there rather than black. <laughs> no. Okay. So now we're going to, so you can see what's going on before I do that. You can see that this is basically pretty simple. There's a couple of layers, right? You've got a couple of layers. You've got a title. You've got a few edits and another title. It's not, not massively complex. It should be pretty straightforward. Let's see what Flame makes of that. Well, that's stupid. Just look at all this stuff. That's ridiculous. There's a, no, 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 no. What's going on? Why is that going into 27 different inputs in different, there's 50 actions in here. This is terrible. No, I've got to, like, there's a lot of throwing. Look at how much there is. It's only five. So, I yeah. I gotta tell you, man, like, I didn't, I had no idea what you were going to be doing. Like, I, when I when I saw this here, I was like, I don't, whew, I don't usually do BFXs that are that complex. So I was like, well, this doesn't seem like that big a deal. He's going to go, he's going to bring one thing in and hit explode effects and uh, Bob's your uncle, you know, and there'll be like four nodes and then, you know, uh, a big deal. You got to throw away one. <laughs> nope. Like if that was the perfect example, <laughs> the absolute perfect example for this. It was. Wow. Yeah. So you then spend, you know, fair enough. It probably takes five minutes to throw that all away and then build it again. But particularly where you've got those, like those edits one after another, you know, the surely that should be kind of track specific and go, okay, all of those edits together, just go into a mux node and spit themselves out at the end or as as coming in the coming in the chat here yeah like a track tracks or clips you can i mean you can take things in as tracks but not not as sensibly as you would like it to be because there's no point i don't need to get into all those edits i just need to have them as a thing um you know it's um it's just it's just irritating yeah it's funny like i never thought about i i remember when like anniversary edition came out and there was a whole like flow chart showing that like what what's happening in the timeline is actually you know building a batch setup in the background like that's how it's yeah. working under the hood i never yeah. thought about what that might mean graphically but clearly that's that's what it means right now yeah yeah right. exactly okay so then the feature request would be uh like uh, as as bob maple says here right a BFI yeah i think so. or tracks or clips rather than every single clip having to be an item in the schematic. Yeah, I mean, even if those could be like a, a an explodable BFX within the BFX, that would be oh, great. Oh, yes, of course, right. Like maybe when you first go into the BFX, 
the clips are clips. They're not exploded yet. Yeah, yeah. You know, that would be, that would be, okay. well, you know. Okay, um, that makes sense. Just as something to make, because there's just too much information in there. There's too much information creating stuff that doesn't, and I guess it's down to, I wonder, I didn't experiment with this, but I wonder whether like the order that the timeline effects are in, you know, whether that has an effect as well. And I do accept that like, there were however many edits that were there and they all had an action on them to put them in the right position within the timeline. So you go, okay, well, yeah, you are saying they're all the same. How does it know that they're all the same? You know, Flame doesn't know that those positions are all the, uh, all the same action, but I don't know. I, maybe there'll be, yeah, exactly. There will be, and certainly these are my, these are, <laughs> these are my complaints and other people will have other complaints. And if we changed it, they would have other complaints about the way we change it too, I'm sure. Oh, completely. <laughs> Completely. Uh, um, yeah. All right. You know, just real quick, Tim uh, Farrell said he did, you don't need to add color to select in the chat. Tim, if you could, we're going to move on to the next one, but if you can elaborate on that in the chat, that would be great. Okay. So we definitely have a feature request to put in for that one there. Let's move on to number 10. Mux input zero. There is no input zero. One or two. Come on. Yes. I yes. actually, I have, an, I have an answer for that. I don't, I don't think you need to show it because it's pretty no, self-explanatory. But I have an answer. Uh, actually, I heard back from Fred, and he said that this is one of those things they actually tried to fix at one point, but it's harder than you might imagine. And the example he gave was that, how would this um, affect old setups? You know, like clearly I, this was like 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 an engineering thing where someone who just decided, you know, when they're writing software that like, well, the first input should be zero, like the first frame could be zero, you know? But here we are 20 years later, like living with the, the consequences of the that. Consequences choice. of that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think I think that makes absolute sense. But that also, you know, that also doesn't that doesn't take away from the <laughs> the fact that it's the fact that the it's fact there that and it's annoying. Wrong. <laughs> it's wrong. You know, you don't count. Okay, how many things have I got? Naught, one. No, hang on, that's not right. You know, you count with how many things have I got? One, two. That's how many things you have. So um, yeah, you know, I feel like the count on Sesame Street now. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on. That was 10. Let's move on to number 11. This one I did like when you showed me. When you rename something and drop it in the media panel, it abandons all knowledge of sorting. Yeah. Okay. What number is this one? Did we say 11? Okay. So, yeah. So, so the way I, again, this is probably just peculiar to me or the way that I tend to work, but uh, say I've got a version here. This is my whip number. And then I do something to that, you know, whatever that is. Uh, I do something to that whip. So that becomes a new whip. So the ordinary way of working would be after you've done enough and you're getting scared that you're going to lose some stuff, you'll rename that one as whip two, chuck it into the library. It goes to the bottom. You know, the one above it is the one you need to delete, stick that into the whip okay so that's my kind of normal working progress so i've always got my latest masters there might be five or six of them with different edits or whatever but they're sitting in there but say you forget to do that and you go okay i've done a change so i've now done this one and it's over here and now i'm gonna save this in the library because it's a new version and i put it in there it's like oh shit hang on that that is that's whip three isn't it so number one is Where's the cancel button? Like, I know that I did this wrong. Now I'd like to stop doing it wrong. Well, my options are- Pause for the cancel button. Thank you. So my options are add it in anyway. And then I go, well, I'm not, am I going to know which one is which? And it will highlight it. So yes, you would. I'm going to replace it. No, definitely don't want that. So that's red. That's a guess a good thing. So I'm going to rename it. So I'll rename it as three. But now it goes above the one that it's supposed to go under. Like none of the sorting has changed. The sorting is still the same. The clip name sort is still the same. But it's now above it. And it's like, well, that, I just, no, don't do that. That's wrong. So I think what I tend to do now if I do this and make a mistake is I go rename it and I call it that. And then, then I know that that's the wrong one. And then I'll do it again. So, yeah, that's just a, it's just a again, it's just a daily little thing that you do backwards and forwards repeatedly and you think oh, that's that would be so so much better if there was a little cancel button there i would i would really like that yeah totally that seems like a bug 
Uh, John in the chat here uh, says that he has reported that. Before. He's a better man than I. Well done, John. Yep. Yeah, Sean Cochran says you can hit rename and then cancel, but that's two buttons. That's now reduced our efficiency by fifty by hundred percent, really. Hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a, and and again, you know, those are little those are little things. And I think that what Richard Betts says there again, you know, there are so many of these things depending on how you, you know, how you how it how you work with Flame. Those are the things that will bug you, you know, because they're they're the things that you use regularly. Those are things that you use every day. Mm -hmm. So if you oh, haven't right. noticed it, it's because you don't use it. And that's that's fine because you're doing something else cleverer than that, probably. Randy says, click the little line next to the tree. You need to explicitly choose a sorting style. Well, you do, but that I, I am already in that sorting style. So I'm already in that there. So that is already sorting it in the correct in the correct manner. And it doesn't what I'm saying is it doesn't like if I uh, if I put it in now it's gone the wrong way but now if i sort it i have to toggle through now there's three button pushes to get it back to where it should be <laughs> um, that's what you, what can you try something for me just out of curiosity what if you yeah. like copied it on the desktop and named it whip four and then dragged whipped four in there like if you didn't have to go through the whole uh dialog box with add or rename does it just work as expected oh yeah, yeah, yeah that works. So if this is now four you just go in and drop it in and it's fine Oh, okay. All right. Well, there we go. Yeah. That at least is the, is the, uh, the thing there. That's, there's the bug. Okay. Yeah. Clearly. I don't know whether I class it as a bug. It's just it's just a, well, why does it do that? And I guess the answer oh, is that's, it's a bug. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's a bug. Definitely. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Here we go. That's moving on now to number 12. When browsing oh, yeah. different media types in the Media Hub, you get inconsistencies. This I thought was like, this solved a mystery for me because I was pulling my hair out, going, "Why is it me? Am I going crazy?" So, so uh, if you go to the Media Hub browser, so, I, so pattern browsing complicates this even more. So if I go to this here and I can see I've got two things called graphic: one's PNG, one's a TIFF, but I can see that actually I've got I've actually got two frames in here. So probably my first thought would be, oh, it's that pattern browsing is turned on. So that must be what's causing the problem. So I'll turn that off. It refreshes it. It doesn't make any difference. So you go, okay, well, uh, I just want this to sort as normal. So let's look at the clip options for PNGs and that is set to sequence. Fair enough. So I need that to be frames. That did not select. Then it did. So those then open up. But now I kind of, I sort of guess, I guess because it's doing it as you select it. But I generally would have it like that with show all formats clicked on. So now I've got to, so now the PNG sort has gone, well, PNGs are going to sort this way, but image sequences are not so you have to now go to the image sequence and go to the clip options and also change that to frames to get that to sort correctly and look at frames rather than sequences and i get maybe i don't know maybe that's not maybe it shouldn't be as much as a problem as i think it is and you know when you're looking at the things that you're you're seeing the right thing and it should be fine but it just seemed to me that there's a lot of menus to go through to get it to sort as frames for everything that you're seeing. Yeah, no, I really thought that the, um, that the, uh, I never thought about that, that like there's an image sequences option set of options and there's options for PNGs and there's options for e EXRs, like which are both image sequences. So maybe there's something there. Yeah. 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 Who knows? Uh, oh, right. I will definitely report that one as uh, that might be a bug. I'm going to say that that might I know. be a bug. It's probably a feature. That's, you know, because someone would say, well, all my PNGs are are definitely individual bits of artwork and all my image sequences are clips. So I want to be able to sort them. You can, you, can kind of, you can kind of get the, so, I, you know, a DPX sequence is probably going to be a sequence, isn't it? But And a PNG may not be. So it, I, it kind of makes sense. I don't... And I just, I don't know what the, the way it is, is probably the right way. It's just funny that it is that way, I guess. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Oh, John's yeah. saying it's not a bug. John, is that how you work? Oh, there's, there's, okay. there's, we've, we've, we've lit a fire here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that was probably one I about the entire video. Nobody was going to be bothered by it, to be honest. So. No, that was a good one. All right. So we are moving on now to number 14, right? Uh, 13. Oh, number 13, right? 13, yeah. Yes. Oh, I love this one. When the conform module cannot link all events, you end up consolidating the handles to zero to help it out, but Flame should just do that itself. Okay. Jeff Cochran, so... I'm not sorry, Jeff. Jeff Kyle is now like cracking his knuckles. He's ready to like, he's got an answer for this one. I know it. Okay. Well, I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is an answer. So if I have got my, um, if I got my my uh, my AAF here that I'm ready to conform, and uh, so now let's just do source time code. So and I put a bookmark in. There we go. So here's my here's my footage. Great. Let's scan that. And we get a load of green ticks. You go. Okay. Great. Fantastic. So let's just link those sources. Right. You think you're done and you're going to go home. Oh, shit. I not link all events. Okay. Well, let's hit it again. Right. So we can see how many we've got here. There's still a load left. I've only hit that button once. Okay. Now I'm going to hit it again. And now it's found some of them. Like it couldn't find with the last button press. So right. that doesn't make any sense either. So, so now let's take these guys, the ones that it says it can't find but I know it can. So now let's go commit, consolidate handles. Let's make the handles zero because that's irrelevant because it can find them and it's still got the handles. So it's like, it said the handles were zero. So you've, you've done no harm by just making the handles zero because when it links them, it puts the handles back that it has. So I just don't understand why it can't do that itself. Why can it not understand what's going on? Oh, that's a great shot of blood being sprayed in someone's I was going to ask, of all the, you know, like possible f like images to show how we're feeling when we're conforming and things aren't working, that one, the yeah, fact that's that the one came in. That's, that's so definitely. like in the, in the comments here, you know, we've got um, Tim Farrell saying he consolidates to zero right away as a matter of course. Uh, Richard Betts, I have been consolidating handles to zero when importing the AFFs. AAFs, well, I, I, I agree with that. And I've got a question for you on that. So if you if you are doing that, if you're consolidating handles, how are you doing that? Are you are you when you go to load the AAF, are you going consolidate handles to zero as part of that dialogue menu? Because that doesn't work all the time. Um, so so say we were going to do it this way. Mm -hmm. uh, where was it? Was it in here? Yeah. Okay. So, are we saying yeah, Richard's saying on ones? import? So, wh what should I be hitting there? That to zero? Yeah, it looks like it. Okay. So let's just see if that works. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to do that from now on. How about that? <laughs> Good solve. Good solve, Richard. Thank you. But equally, uh, I also still think, you know, I'm going to be adamant about my, like, if that's what it has to do to do the conform, it should just do that. Like, why should I have to do that? To, why do I just have to tell it to to work that way when it needs to work that way? Do you know what I mean? If it's no, it, I agree. It just, and if there's a problem, just, tell me. You know, like if, if if you need to, if I want ten frames of handles on everything, but these six clips have to have zero, fine. Or what, I mean, just whatever. Put a marker on it. Let me know. But yeah, yeah. I, I hear you. Because you're not losing oh, right. anything when you do that conform. All those the, the tails are now there. Whatever they did within the in the mm -hmm. telecine, you know, forty eight frame handles. So that's. You haven't lost anything, so why why is it there? So 
Why, is, exactly. why does it have handles that make it can't find things if it doesn't need yes. them? That's the so, existential question of our time. Well, that's an answer, but I still think that's a bug. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, let's move on to number 14. When you enter timeline effects and then come back out, you end up looking at different timeline effects. I just want to exit the timeline. Okay, so I'll go back to exit this to the timeline, excuse me. Yeah, so this guy, for example, and this is a poor example, but this is it. So I've got a BFX in here that has got the title being put on top of the picture. And then for whatever reason, I've then got a, uh, I've got a color warp on top of that, okay? And a comp. So if by mistake, I've got the color warp, I wanna go in and change the position of this title. So I wanna go into the BFX, but because that was lit, because that was selected previously, I go into the editor, then immediately you go, oh, sod it, I'm in the color warp. I didn't mean to be in there. I'll just jump straight into the BFX. I'll make my change now. This is what I actually meant to do was, uh, was change the size of this. Much and now I'll exit batch effects back to the timeline, right? That's what you expect. I'm back in the color warper where I didn't want to be in the first place. And now I've got to exit out of that. I don't understand that logic either. It's not logic. It's not logic. <laughs> I hear you. So, you just want to be able yeah. to hit exit and just exit right back out to the exit, timeline. Exit means exit. Doesn't mean exit into the thing that you were in before, I don't think. But I guess that's a, <laughs> you know, if they were sort of did it in, I mean, there's just no logic to it. I think there's no, there's no, I keep on using that word, which is quite funny, but um, yeah, it's a, it's just an annoyance and it's my fault for going into the wrong node in the first place, clearly, but you know, that happens. <laughs> so it's not logic. Yes, exactly. I wonder, it's, yeah, I think I was, I was thinking about this problem uh, the other day or, you know, after our run through and I was wondering if yeah. maybe like, I mean, yeah, like, yeah, to your point, like you, you, it's taking you back to where you entered from. And I guess that that's the, the intention, you know, but, uh, yeah. I wonder if maybe there could be a preference for like, you know, always exit BFX back to the timeline or something like that. Right. Well, I think uh, it's Jeff, it's everything back to the timeline. Oh, hold on. Jeff has a suggestion here. Double click to enter instead of, uh, and then yeah, no, that's right. If I so yeah, clearly, if I'd hit BFX, I would go into BFX and then I come out. That's absolutely that's dead right. But what I'm saying is, if I didn't do that and Color Warper was lit and I hit editor just because I did, or equally, if Color Warper was lit and I hit that, so if you if you jumped in by going via the timeline, this this is probably a better example rather than using the editor button. If that's lit, I forgot it was there. I now think I'm going to BFX and I'm in Color Warper. I want to go into BFX, I exit BFX, I'm still back in the Color Warper. So it does it the same way, you know, unless you explicitly select BFX and go in, that, that absolutely makes it, it does work then. But I'm saying when you're being an idiot, why doesn't it work? <laughs> yeah, again, we've, we've, uh, uh, the, the chat is going crazy. Uh, just with, uh, this has been another controversial suggestion here let's see some people are saying yes uh who was it uh let's see brooks is saying it's uh if uh he exited bfx and it went to the timeline every time he would go mad but then of course valentine is saying i never use the editor button <laughs> i always double click and then you know tim makes a good point don't ever exit bfx and then just stay in there forever Stay there forever. That's a good. That's a good thing. And you know, and I also, I also, I also hear what oh. Jeff's saying. Like Autodesk shouldn't fix things based on user error, but you kind of go, well, is that user error really? I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. But 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 I don't. I don't see the. I don't see how the 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 logic. I don't understand the sort of the the methodology why you think you would want to. So I know I've done this wrong. So I know I've made a mistake and I'm correcting that mistake. And now that mistake you, is correcting itself again. Go back, uh, Tim's suggesting that if you're in batch, if you're in BFX, if you go into BFX and then rather than exit, hit the timeline tab. So I'm in BFX and I hit the timeline tab. Well, that takes you into the timeline for the, for the BFX. Oh, so that, right. 
So okay, all right. I think I'm definitely open to uh, open to people saying that I'm the idiot, really. But you know, I can I can I take that. Anyone, no one would say that. This is a <laughs> loving community we've built here. What are you talking about? Okay, and now finally. We've reached number 15 in Andy's list of the 10 things that uh, drive him crazy about flame. And that is timeline action is just a repurposed DVE from smoke. There's a little bitterness sprinkled in there. Put the real action in there and get rid of the shadow and light. I always throw them away. So, so again, this has been put in, this title has been put in as 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 an action and now I want to do something with it. So you, you know, you go into that action and it's not, it's not really action. It's the old DVE. So you've got a shadow automatically attached. You've got a light automatically attached. I don't need any of those. I don't want them to be there. Why are they there? And it, I, it, it doesn't, it just feels like it's, I mean, it probably, did it used to say DVE? I think it used to say DVE and then they just changed the name to action. It's, yeah. I think when it first came out, it was either DVE or action DVE. Yeah, and then, yeah, exactly. uh, I remember there used to be like a camera in there and front and mat sources. It was all kinds of stuff. Yeah, um, exactly. I did the same so, thing. Oh, sorry. Right. I was going to say, I, I do the exact same thing as you. I'm just going to get rid of this clock that I never remember to start. I do the same exact thing as you is like, I see that stuff and immediately just like throw it out. Just get rid yeah. of it. What, what is this? Get rid of it. So I do Why have, do I need that? And it happens if you... solutions you know, for you. Yeah, good. Oh, go ahead. You, no, you go first. You said yeah, it happens if... It happens if you like if it comes in as part of your um, part of your conform stuff, or you know it may, it may well have come in as part of the AAF, or it may well have come in as um, uh, as part as something that you add in. It doesn't. It kind of doesn't make any difference how it's how it's happened effectively. So mm-hmm. it's not like there's one thing that's that's the one. It's not like the AAF is creating the problem. Yeah. So it's, so I think even if you just hit it, if you, you know, you just add it on the timeline yourself. Yeah. So I just um, added that and it's, it's, it's exactly the same. It's doing the same thing. It gives you the same, uh, gives you the same issues. Let me show you, uh, I got two solutions for you for that. The first is, um, there is uh, a new feature in flame 2022. Um, well, that's cheating. Yeah. Well, I'm going to, and then I'm going to show you the other way. It, uh, but there is a new feature in Flame 2022. Let me just get rid of this action, which is not deleting because we're doing a live show right now. Thank you very much. Okay. Then we'll just go to this clip. <laughs> if I go ahead and add an action, um, there's a new option here under setup and objects and maps, which calls, which is um, save current as default. So if you get rid of these things, oh, that's amazing. Whatever you want, boom. Now if you go ahead and add an action over here to this shot, uh, then oh, that's perfect. Problem solved, right? There's a reason to upgrade, but upgrading uh, sometimes isn't uh, not not everybody can upgrade in the moment. Maybe in the middle of a big project or something like that. So um, I did write a Python script that I'll make available on the forum which no. uh, we'll go ahead and add an action timeline effect and it'll be clean. Oh. So, I mean, this just no, adds no. like a bare empty action effect. If you had two things selected or whatever, it wouldn't work. But, uh, you know, if you had two clips and you wanted to combine them or something like that, actually, no, that would be a BFX. But anyway, so there's, there's a solution there for pre 2022. You know, if you, if you're not ready to upgrade. Great. That's amazing. I, I, I've just, I'm going to give you a 16 as well, just if we got time. Oh, of course. Which, which was, which really came to mind when we were, when, when I was putting this in here. So the, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to do that. The logic of, the, it's all down to logic. This is great. I'm using your brand name all the time. <laughs> the, the logic of what a, whether you are, when you're creating a G mask, whether it means I don't want to see that thing or I do want to see that thing, and that's tied up with the with the uh, the the whole entire system's problem with transparency and opacity. That, like, if this was a hundred percent transparent, it means it wouldn't do anything. So, it zero percent transparent would mean that it's a hundred percent opaque which would mean it will be doing something that 
just seems to be the wrong way around. But also <laughs> when you're making when you're making masks in different uh, in different areas, they they have different effects and they logically don't they don't work with each other. So you might put one in. You might be masking something out. So say this was a uh, say we had an image node going on here and I had done a selection on you know his face or whatever and so the logic of the last G mask was you want to mask out the bits that you when you draw the mask it will take things out right oh this is going to do it the same way isn't it does that do the same thing or is it the wrong way no this one works the opposite way so this one goes, I want to keep what's inside the G mask. Okay. But if you go into the action and you say, I want to keep what's inside the G mask. I want to keep the hut. No, I'm losing that. Like the, the just the logic doesn't seem right. Like and yeah. it, it, it constantly puts you in a place where you go, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't. I meant it to work the other way because it worked the other way the last time I did it, which was in a different mode. And yeah, you know, it's it's just inconsistent, and it's it's just a thing that um, that also I think I think and I can't remember where it is, but there's a difference between transparency and opacity in some of the nodes as well. So transparency yes. means you know means see through when it's an image, but it means not see through when it's a G mask. So I and I know like I see this. Um... You know, I know if you draw a mask, if you draw a G mask in action, the the intent is that it's like punching a hole through your comp uh, as far as like what the camera is seeing. But I I usually start like I'll start my G masking in a G mask tracer node, like somewhere over there, and then yeah. I'll copy and paste them into action, and then I have to start making I have to start inverting them and everything because. Oh, and in the, the and, tracer node, they start out white, and but then in the action node, they're essentially black. And, right? and, and the, as uh, Brooks Blot is saying, there, you know, the combining of masks, and I know how I, I know Grant K has done a done a video on this explaining it, but it's it shouldn't need explaining. You know, <laughs> it should, there's so many different drop down menus of like, are you adding, are you subtracting the layering between them? And it's, it, it doesn't, it doesn't really work as well as it should. And I think it's a confusing nomenclature and it's a confusing, uh, more confusing than it should be, or at least I find it more confusing than it should be. Well, I'd like to uh, thank you for not only adding us, you know, a bonus, but also ending on a high note. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely a feature request. Um, Excellent. You know, I just I just want to show everybody while while we're here. I just want to I do want to show everybody that you know. Um, I mean, first of all, before I do anything, I want to thank you, Andy, for coming on and for doing this. Somebody in the chat here said that like th th we should do one of these a month, like where everybody just goes through and and it seems like like it's a like it's it's grievances or it's a bitch session or anything, but it's not because no. it, it, this is the way we move the ball forward, you know. And then. Um, I, I can't, you know, uh, I, I, I know I, I preach this a lot, but it's absolutely true. Um, you know, the dev team, they do, they do listen, whether they implement the things or not, or whether it takes longer than you want it to is, is absolutely, you know, a real thing, but, uh, you certainly can go to feedback, flamefeedback.autodesk.com and submit your feedback, submit of, a, uh, a, either a bug or a feature request and then ask people to, to upvote them. That's how like they hear from the community. They, they say like flat out, they're, they're not gonna, they, they hear you like when you complain or, or make a comment or whatever on like a message board or Facebook or even our forum. But this is how like the, 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 the problems get fixed, so to speak. And uh, my, favorite, uh, my favorite feature of every release of Flame is this, is you know the list of, in this case, there were 49 things put into Flame Feedback that were uh, implemented in this release. Some of them are small, like, you know, whatever, shortcut conflicts between Create Light and Media List. Some are not so small. Like there's one in here that I think someone called out, yes, action improved 3D tracking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> which, you know, yes. how long have we been waiting for the new 3D tracker, which looks awesome, by the way. So, but definitely, uh, you know, um, the message that I, that, uh, my message to everyone is, 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 you know, please, 
if you do have a, a, a feature that you'd like to see implemented or a bug or, or that, that you found, definitely put it into Flame Feedback. I'm going to, going to put these uh, that we found today into Flame Feedback as feature requests. I'll post all the little uh, codes and everything so people can go and upvote them. And uh, there's really nothing better than when the list comes out and you see some things like that you recommend. Yeah. So, and, uh, and, you know, and I, I really didn't, I don't. I, I hope this didn't come across as a as a bitch session about Flame because I'm so grateful to to Flame and to Autodesk for keeping me employed since you know <laughs> since 2000. And uh, you know it, it, it's it, it's an amazing piece of software, and I don't think anything else does it as well as it does do it. And uh, and and these little details that 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 bug you are just because you're so deep into it every single day. And, you know, yep. it's, it's my, it's my livelihood and, and I'm very grateful to it and very grateful to all the developers who have built this. So please don't, <laughs> don't hate 100%. me, please. No, dude, I don't think that's, that comes, it came across that way at all. We, this is, we, you know, I used to joke, it wasn't a joke. It was a sad commentary on my life, but I used to joke that like I spent more time with my flame than with my family. So if that's the case, then I might as well do what I can to make it better. You know, yeah. uh, it was just, we care. We're a passionate community and you know, you wouldn't have taken the time to do all this if you didn't care. So thank you very much, man. Uh, we welcome. are a little, we are a little bit over and I want to thank uh, Andy. I want to thank everybody for not only sticking through, but like the chat has been going wild. This is great. And thank you. This is, you know, our first test on, on YouTube with uh, a whole new piece of software. And I want to thank everybody. Let's give away some prizes while we're here. Right. All right, it's Logic Live prize time, ladies and gentlemen. I have uh, masks and batteries, uh, phone chargers, courtesy of our friends at uh, Cinesis. I even made myself a little square, Randy. Look at that. I have like one of these, right? Courtesy of our friends at Cinesis.io. Let's go ahead and go to the uh, name picker here. I put everybody's name in, right? And this is brought to you by your friends at E-Trade. If you haven't bought any Bitcoins or anything for your 401k, do it right now. Uh, over at E-Trade. Okay, here we go. So this is for a, a Logic TV mask. Let's see. And the mask goes to Hardave. Oh, we just learned, by the way, that pushing the applause button stops the music in this new piece of software. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. Congratulations, Hardave. I'm going to play the music again. There we go. And we're going to do one more for a, uh, a battery. Let's see. A Logic phone charger. Pedro, are you here? Well, that's all right. I have your email address, so I'm going to send it to you anyway. Congratulations, Pedro. Uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to stop this damn music. Thank you. There we go. Great. Uh, let me just go ahead and finish this up with uh, just showing everybody what's coming up next on Logic Live. Let's see. Coming up next, next week. Oh, Pedro is here. Congratulations, man. You have won yourself a Logic phone charger, courtesy of Synesis.io. All right. Next week, April 25th at 2 p.m. is Keying with Richard Betts. I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you so much. Then these are out of order because, they, you know, why not? Uh, so, so let me do this. So on May 2nd, uh, is uh, we're going to have Will Harris on and he's going to present the Flame 2022 release. Uh, I'm actually quite excited to announce that um, every month, once a month for the entire summer, uh, we're going to have a member of the dev team on showing off one of the new major features of, uh, of uh, Flame 2022. And I'm even working on like a greatest hits collection with... Um, with our friend Grant Kay to uh, show off some great stuff. But uh, May 2nd, Will Harris, Flame 2022, and May 16th, we're going to do uh, the uh, virtual users group with the stories of old flame. Uh, yes, I don't know if you've all been following that thread on the forum, but it's like old timers day at uh, the baseball game. So uh, it's great. We're going to have a, a bunch of uh, legendary flame artists on talking about the good old days. So definitely join us for that. Okay, the forum, the forum, the forum. Thank you, everybody, for being so wonderful and and uh, and being so involved with the forum. Thank you, Randy, for putting it together. Forum.logic.tv. I think these records are worth repeating. We are at over 5,000 page views a day and over 100,000 per month on the forum, and that would be nothing without all you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, this episode of Logic Live, like all episodes, will be available at logic.tv, where you can find other great content. This Tuesday... Uh, God willing, I'm going to have another episode of the Logic Podcast out. I'm really looking forward. I'm really happy about this one. This is, uh, I did an interview with Grant McKean, who uh, in, his, in his spare time, he uh, plays the 
uh, British Steve Jobs. Um, we did, uh, he, he reached out to me about doing uh, a talk on lifelong learning, which was just like, it was, it's one of the greatest interviews that I've ever done. So uh, I'm really looking forward to that. That should be on Tuesday. And thank you very much, Grant. We broke a thousand. So thank you everybody uh, for, uh, for subscribing to the YouTube channel. And of course, thank you to all of our patrons on Patreon. We're going to go right after this to the, the patrons uh, after show. So please, uh, if you'd like to join us, all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash logic TV. And for as little as five bucks a month, you can get access to some great stuff. And remember, on the 28th, uh, it's the Catch Up With Flame session, followed by the Flame Award. And uh, Boris FX, thank you guys for always sponsoring us. If you need anything in the realm of plugins from Boris, just use the code LOGIC-15 at checkout. Save yourself 15%. And of course, Gunpowder. You want to try out their Flame in the Cloud, reach out to the guys at info at gunpowder.tech. And AJA, thank you so much for, for uh, and welcome back as a sponsor, AJA together with Flame since 2006. And of course, thank you to our friends at Synesis.io for always supporting the Logic community, solutions, development, integration, and support, supporting Flame artists since 1997. That's going to do it for Logic Live today. Thank you, everybody, for 50 great episodes. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you next week.